Now think about, uh, leave the bones in there, please. They come up later. Uh, now when you think about saying I failed, think about the acrobat, if you will. Think about the acrobat who stands on the end of the little catapult there. The guy jumps down, bam! Ooh, she's going for the shoulders, right? And, oh, oh. and at that moment, what are we all feeling? Oh my God, right? Now we've all eaten lunch, our stomach's in our, our blood's in our stomach. If we can get up and do a little bit of stand-up work here for a second, and show me what it feels like to fail when you first realize it. What does it look like in your body, right? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, God. Imagine being in public watching a video of yourself failing. Oh, oh, God, oh, ooh, right? Well, does that acrobat get up there and go, I'm really sorry. I don't mean to pick on you, Steve. I'm heading into a shame spiral. And I'd like to, um, no, she gets up there and she gets back on the catapult, right? And launches, poof, does the thing. Now, when she's in midair, are we with her even more now? Yeah. And she lands, oh, God, and this time when she misses, we're like, oh, God, and what do we want? She gets up there, boom, again. She's going to land on this guy's shoulders. Time slows down. We're all so with her. And she fails again. And we cheer. What does she do? She comes up and she gives what's called a circus bow. Does she say, I feel stupid? Maybe. She goes, I feel stupid, right? It's okay to feel stupid. So I want to have us reappropriate when you feel stupid. Say it. Give the circus bow. I, I feel, feel stupid. stupid. Turn, to the person, turn to the person next to you and go, I screwed up. <laughs> How about this one? Yay, I failed. Yay, I failed. <laughs> you can sit down. Right? By the way, for the circus, uh, they call that smile and style. Smile and style. Smile and style. My little girl does circus. I'm going to tell you about uh, when I had rapid succession all in once, gigantic fails. <coughs> it starts around in your position right here. And he knew me by my shoes, right? They were Kenneth Coles. They stood out in the office complex of engineers in their generic sneakers. <laughs> and most people in such sacred moments, they stay silent, right? It's a meditative moment. <laughs> he just couldn't resist. David Delp, you are the most creative guy in this place. I mean, most people want to hear that, right? And I wanted to cry. I hated my job. Sure, it was fancy. I had a title, Creative Director, Microsoft Television Products. Right? I had a fancy staff. God, the cafe was amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> but I hadn't done anything creative, anything I considered creative in years. And at home, my marriage was totally falling apart. I felt thwarted in my role as a father. And my body, not the thing you see here, <laughs> was a good bit heavier, more sludge-like, and I poured it in and out of my car. <laughs> Three hours I commuted it every day. Really, I was barely alive. I mean, somebody on the outside thought it was amazing. On the inside, it didn't feel so good. So one of the best things happened to me. I got laid off with 250 other people. <laughs> when my manager called me up, I was like, I know. Just tell me what the deal is. He's like, oh, it's going to be a bad, it's going to be a bad day for you. It is a good day for me. <laughs> and I moved out of home where my daughter lived with her mother. And everything opened up. No more meetings, no more commutes, nothing. The only structure I had was my four-year-old's preschool schedule and an extra rent. So... As the last millennium clocked out, along with the first half of my life, I made a promise to myself, I will find a way to be fully alive. I said, before I die, I'm going to know I lived. 
because I didn't feel like it at that point. Now, what's funny about this question, before I die, I ask it of, I probably asked it of most of you. Thinking about the end of my life is an amazing way to find out what it means to be alive. It's a way to, to understand my dreams. And so I made a list I, of things I knew for sure that I wanted to do before I died. I wanted to make more than enough money, right? Enough, enough is more than enough because it's enough money doing work I believed in. I wanted to never stop creating things that connect me to the sublime, singing. I wanted to raise my daughter to feel safe and strong. That was enough, safe and strong. Wouldn't that be amazing? I wanted to take care of this precious body. <laughs> and I wanted to learn how to be loved before I died. I wanted to learn how to be loved and how to love. There was something on my list. I made a bunch of these things. And it's not a bucket list. These are things that really count. It's not just a list of experiences I'm trying to collect. One thing I put on my list was, before I die, I want to forgive my father. Can you relate to that, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Now, I loved my dad. Still do. But he had really been sloppy with the divorce. And I had these little, like when I'd get together with him, I'd have these mean little jabs, you know? Just little digs here and there, and it just told me I was carrying this thing around, and I thought, forgive my father, forgive my father. Okay. Everybody wants to be able to forgive my father. What am I going to do? What will I do? What will I... This year, I'm going to take a trip to Mexico with him. I mean, I had all this time on my hand. It seemed like a nice thing to do, go to Mexico with my dad. <laughs> and I called him up, and I said, let's go to Mexico. And he said, uh... Yeah, why not? I mean, to his credit, he wanted to come along. And two months later, we took a trip to Mexico. Uh, this is him on our trip. And it's really <coughs> funny <laughs> what happens on a long trip in preparation. I did, I wasn't going to tell us, but I'm going to tell it. So I went and got some pot. And. <laughs> He and I had never, by the way, I, I, have to, I have to say that I don't know when I'm going to say it, but at some point in this presentation, I'm going to say <laughs> I don't know when, but I, I just, I kind of wish I could have done that before you. And so be prepared. Uh, so we tried pot for the first time together. I had never tried it. He tried it. Uh, we ended up crying while he was showing me some photographs, and I was looking at him going, is this it? And he's like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, there's a basket of bones somewhere. I brought them down by the computer. Okay. Um, I'm going to sing a song for you, because two months after that trip, I wrote this song. But I'm going to have you help me out. So grab two. Thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Clap them together like this. Clap. Clack, clack, clack. Clack, 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 clack. Two, three, four. Clack, 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 clack. Two, Think of this. When I go like this, stop. And when I start, think of that as death dancing along with this song. Along the sea, 
stopped by some friends I know. <laughs> Before you die. Is there one thing that you know for sure you want to do before you die? One thing you know for sure. If so, write it down. Before I die, I want to finish that sentence. Doesn't need to be all encompassing, just one thing you know for sure. As you look at this, I want to ask you, would you be willing to set aside a bunch of other things to do this? Maybe you are already doing it. But that's the key. That's the difference between something that is a passing fantasy and something that's a dream. So these are your dreams, at least one of them. And it's OK if they're a little bit out of your reach. It really is. Dreams are meant to be dreamed of. And. If what you wrote down right now, you're not totally comfortable with, that's OK. We're going to talk about how to maybe narrow it in a little bit on something that feels a little more right. If you didn't write anything, that's great. That's like half the people I try to put these goggles on. They're like, no. <laughs> so today, I'm going to try to walk you through what it means to make your dreams and how to touch them a little bit, if not all the time. Now, we have all sorts of different kinds of dreams, things that we could finish by saying, before I die, I want them. Half of these are mine. Uh, most of the rest of them are people I've worked with. And the thing about these things is, uh, if we aren't actually trying to get closer to them, I'm not sure what it means to be alive then, right? So the problem we have is 
that there are these dreams and then there is the gap between doing it. So today is about closing that gap if we can. Trying to make them feel real. And I'm going to tell you something. That uh, two weeks ago I turned 50. And I can kick. <laughs> Anybody get that reference? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and I am happy to say that all of those things I just listed are in full gear. I am in full pursuit of those. I'm not, I'm failing a lot, but I am at least failing at things I care about. And what's amazing is, and it has taken me 10 years to turn this ship and be able to say that. And that's okay. The turning, actually, as soon as I started to turn was when I felt like it would be okay to die. I was afraid to die before that. But as soon as I felt the chip turning, I was like, ah, it's at least going in the right direction. And it was revelatory. I had a party two weeks ago. My dad showed up and sang that song with me while we clacked bones. <laughs> <laughs> so I have another dream, and that is to someday sing like an angel, preferably before I die. <laughs> and I'm going to invite you to sing with me, too, at the end of this. But... What happened is I had to develop a system. And people started asking me how I did it. And I started teaching them. And the key point in all of this is that we all have this resource. Depending on how able we feel, depending on how much time we have, it's our attention that's the most in important resource. I don't necessarily really, honestly, sorry guys, don't believe in simplif simplification so much. Simplicity isn't my motto. But removing the stuff and focusing, learning how to focus on what's most important to you, is, to me, the key to, to being fully alive. And so managing your attention, what I've developed are attention management tools. So I do that through my blog called Pilot Fire. And it's right here, tools, fuel, and steering instructions to make a life you believe in. And the one I'm going to tell you about today is the simple system, oops, hold on a second. They said I could do this, and I can. Uh, a simple system for everything. It's a modest idea, <laughs> uh, but it's what I use all the time. In fact, um, it's right here, and it's what you're holding in your hands. That's it. This is the way I touch my dreams every day. And I'll show you how it works for me and how it works for people who work with me. Now, the first, the components of it are, go like this. It's, uh, oh, these are the goals of the simple system, just to run through them. To negotiate urgent versus important. And uh, the idea is that urgency often feels like it's the most important thing. But our dreams and how we connect to people are really what we're trying to do. So negotiating that and how to remember and understand and stay connected to what's important is what this system's supposed to do. To know what to do next. How many people have too much they need to do and they can't figure out what to do next? Okay, this system is supposed to solve all that. <laughs> and know what to don't, right? You have your do lists and your don't lists. And I don't mean don't like pornography and smoking pot and whatever. I mean like don't do this stuff yet. Because we want to keep track of those lists, the things we think we might want to do, and then focus, because that's where our attention goes all the time. We're scattered to those don't lists. So if we can keep our do lists real, that's good. Keep a vision of where to go and how. <coughs> and, ah, oh, yes, the old enjoying getting there. So one of the key, the key components of a simple system for everything um, is understanding our roles. Now, I was introduced with my roles as a father, as a gardener, as a, as a designer, as a teacher, as a lover, as a friend, as a son. And I talked a little bit about our goals. And I'm very specific about what goals are. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to go back. I want you to think about, nah, I'll get to that. Uh, and then there is what to do this week. And if there's anything that's the most important stuff, that I find is planning your week and the most important things, and making your day's plan and prioritizing it. So I'm going to go on each one of these. <coughs> your roles. 
This is a weird concept for some people. It's like, who are you to somebody else? Now, you talked about like getting away from all of that, that fantasy of who we are. And I, I totally believe that finding that position where you can be aware and actually acknowledge and even laugh at the different roles we play in our lives is so essential to really understand when we step back into those roles who we are. You need a little distance on it. So I'm going to have us, as, and it's a very deep process, but I'm going to do it very quickly with you. I want you to list some of the roles you play. And we'll start with the ones that revolve around love, the energy of love. So who are some of the people you love? Remember that list of nine influential, eight influential people? What is your role to them? Are you a son? Write it down. I'm a son. Every other person in the room is a son. Are you a daughter? Are you a father? Sister? Friend? A companion in travel? Are you a lover? And a husband? Those two things are different, actually. They can be with the same person, we would hope, but they are different roles. <laughs> Neighbor. Neighbor starts with love. How about money? I believe in money. Money is an amazing energy that we get to use and, and bring into our lives and shovel out. So what are the roles that revolve around money? For me, I think of, I actually have this wheel I turn. And that role is the breadwinner. And I can ignore the breadwinner sometimes, and then I have to go over and turn the wheel. And I call it the breadwinner, because right now it isn't fully integrated, but it is a way to get money into my life. Breadwinner's one. Sometimes my role is an entrepreneur, or a money manager. I like to call that one the millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Aspirational roles are good. So write down your money roles. You're right, Brooks. Like, five seconds is a long time. <laughs> okay, there's another category, which is creativity. I think of creativity this way. All of these are different energies, right? There's love energy, which is the energy you give to somebody else. There is money energy, which is the currency, the energy we exchange out in society. There's creativity, which is the energy you put into making the world better. That's it. Innovation, beauty. Are you a gardener? I'm a singer. I write songs. I'm a playwright by sheer will. What are some of the creativity roles, the roles that make you feel like you are doing something out in the world to make it better? So I'm going to give you two other roles. There's the role of your vitality. And uh, we did not coordinate our talks, Jeff, but I think of your vitality as the fire in you. <laughs> and I think of the role you play when you're building that fire as the stoker. So in, my, in the role of stoker, my only question is, how can I, how can I manage the energy of my body and soul? Sometimes the the thing I need to do is sleep right now. And I caught a nice 15 minute nap out in the fireplace room. It seemed appropriate, the fire and I were mingling. 15 minutes. Uh, eating right, um, exercising, basic stuff. You don't get the fire of your body working. So the stoker is a role to put down there. And of course, a little brand, uh, pushing the brand. There is the role of the pilot. The pilot is the one who steers your life. The one who's listening to me now going, oh, he's going to tell me how to figure out what to do next. Great. The pilot is the one that says, let's go over there today, not there. The one who decides what's most important. <coughs> who's sort of the executor of all the other roles. And if, it, and if the pilot's a good one, they don't play a huge role very often. They let the other roles do their jobs. Okay, the next component is uh, goals. I have a very specific idea about goals. Goals are, uh, I mean, anything you want to do, you put I want to, after that it's, it can be a goal. But some goals are vague. And the word goal comes from the word goal. I know it's a stretch. <laughs> but it's, it's a, uh, a marker. It's like Gaelic or something. It's probably pronounced goal. 
Uh, but once you cross that marker, you are no longer there. You are now here. And think of it as a finish line, right? You know when you've got to cross the finish line. I like to think of it as a target. You know when you hit and when you didn't. And I like to think of it as a target, like something you can cross off your list. So the great thing about a goal is not that when you achieve it, it'll make you happy. We don't know that stuff. Somebody said that just now. Like, that getting to your goals, we just don't know what that'll feel like. It was Joshua. I got to 1.5 million. Now I want three, right? But it's the getting there. Goals help you focus. And if they're specific and if they're crafted really well, the third graders are really good at making goals. Let's say you and I are having a sleepover. We're in third grade. And I say to you, let's have fun. We okay. both go. That is not a goal. But if I say, first one in the tree gets the top bunk. Oh. Oh. What are we doing right now? You know, what happens to our guy? I, I said it there, and he's behind this desk, right? I know my eyes dilate, he starts to veins come out, and we, as we get closer to and closer to this goal, all sense of time disappears. All sense of self disappears. In fact, the bunks disappear. We are just focused on that goal. And I would say that is when you are fully alive. When you're focused on something you care about, that is when you're fully alive. If you can get your goals to work for you, if you can get so that they help you focus, I think that's when you're fully alive. So I want you to look back at what you wrote down. Before I die, I will. Or I want to. I want to. And right after that, and this year, I will. Now, don't make it big. Make it something you absolutely know you can do this year, sometime in the next three to 12 months. And if you're struggling, I'll let you struggle a little bit. Sometimes it's pretty easy to figure it out. I do this every year as part of a workshop to plan our, our lives and our plan our years. And one year I wrote, before I die, I want to get to know my oldest brother a little better. I won't go into that relationship, but it wasn't close. Uh, and I, it was a killer year. I got to the end of the year, I'm like, I did that one. You can tell it's three by five cards. And that was the only one I didn't do. And you know what I was supposed to do that year? It was like, before I die, I want to get to know my oldest brother a little better. And this year, I will tell him. How long does that take? Right? But it's pretty simple. As soon as I got to it, I was like, oh, God, got to find his phone number. Phone number, phone number. Should have been that, should have been the next thing, find his phone number. <laughs> Found the phone number, called him up. 20 awkward minutes into it, it's like, oh, I got to get to get the night a little better. And it's like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, maybe I'll call you in a couple months. Yeah, okay. Check. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him, right? I touched it. So if you're struggling, sometimes all you need to do is tell somebody. Just let me know. It can be the, for instance, somebody is going to go to a, a, a 10 day meditation retreat, somebody in this room. His might be as simple as just book the date. Just book the date. Like, it's much easier to think, oh, I'll just like schedule it. I don't. It doesn't have to be this year. And then once you get into it, you know, run into that tree. You're like, oh, it's gotta be right there. Feels good. So I keep hitting the play button or something. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So uh, those are our goals, and the key really is to make them specific, right? By saying what I'm going to do this year, it makes a big difference. And one thing I want to have you try right now, it's a little odd to think about roles, but think about the person you would tell. Who would you tell this to? Who would care? Who would go, oh, totally get it? Even if it's that fantasy person, Laurie Anderson? Gonna go to Mexico with my dad. Oh, she would get it. She'd go, I gotta get it. Write down the name of that person at the bottom there. Who, who is that? 
And what is your role to them? Who are you to them? So what happens is when I start to uh, think about my roles, some of these goals start to get more resonance. They start to feel right. Like if I say, I'm going to go to Mexico. Mm, I'm going to go to Mexico with my dad because I really need to work something out with him. I'm not sure how to say it. Long drive. Hot. <laughs> it starts to simplify things. It starts to clarify at least. It starts to tell you, maybe I am not going to be a theologian. Maybe that dream needs to just fade. Maybe my role is, is different. Maybe I'm a, a writer. And that's what I want to focus on. So now the question is, what can you do this week? This week. In that, in that scheme, what can you do this week? You know you can do it. Write it down. So just to tell you how a week's plan works, you look at the most important roles that you need to pay attention to this week. You think, what's going to make a great week? What is the one most important thing I need to do this week? And you make small goals that you know you can finish this week, and you turn them into a plan. And this was my week's plan. As a stoker, OK, eat well, do the exercise. But really, I wiped out on my bike. Handlebar broke, snapped off, lodged into my front wheel. And I hit right there. You can still see the nice little mark. That was 10 months ago. My shoulder's at 90%, and I could keep it at 90, 91%, and it'll always be the weak weight. So that's the most important thing. It takes five minutes to do my shoulder exercise. Invite my daughter to Lake Street Dive. She said no, but she knows. You know, good gesture. God, it's going to be a great show. Close Autodesk as a breadwinner. Bumped up my rate like for the first time in like three years, 33%, bam, they were like, okay. Mm -hmm. Try it, totally do it, double your rate next time somebody asks. They will, they will pay much more attention to you. Uh, teacher rehearsed workshop 11 times, yay, totally failed. <laughs> uh, finish a book I'm reading, uh, it's like 11 pages. Uh, make the song teachable, you'll tell me if I fail at the end of this. This is not a to-do list of things to be productive. This is a list. This is the most important thing to do. This is my best shot at having a great week. And I've done all but one of them. <laughs> uh, I tried. I tried. I... Anyway, long story on the rehearsing thing. But this is your best shot at, at, at making a week. And when you're in the state, it takes 20 minutes to do a week's plan. When you're in the state, it's probably the only time you're actually focused on this. But it's a great 20 minutes. Uh, and by the way, there, if you Google plan a great week 20 minutes, you'll land on this page um, that teaches you how to do this. I'm not going to go into all the details about it. The day's plan, what I'm going to tell you is revolutionary about a day's plan is put your appointments on one side and put your do list on the other. This was Tuesday's plan. At least have those two things together, because you'll notice, yeah, I have a lot of stuff I need to do today, and there's no time. That's when you go, maybe I'm not going to do all that stuff. I don't know why calendar programs have totally removed this concept. Here's another concept is you prioritize them. Ones mean, i got to do this. This is one of the most important things for me to do. Twos mean, OK, this is what I'm going to do. Three, if I have enough time. That exercise in itself is amazing. Then circle the one most important thing to do Tuesday, and I did it. I got you my slides. They don't look anything like these. Uh, so just to review a little bit, your roles and goals are a lifelong process that you review all the time. God, am I doing my best as a father? There are, there are pieces of this that... Uh, are just going to be forever. And some of your roles fade away, and some come up. And that's why I call it like your cast of characters is all of the roles you play and all the people that play together. And I think of your week's plan as this week's like sitcom script. Like who's going to show up? <laughs> who's going to do that? In, 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 in actor parlance, it's called the objective. What do I want? And it's drama when one role wants something and the other wants something else. 
in the F conflict. So we don't want that kind of drama in our lives, especially in, shut up, let them talk. <laughs> uh, so that's a lifelong process, um, letting them inform each other. And then it's pretty simple, I think, that your goals, you look at your roles and goals every week, you make a week's plan. And as you make your day's plan, when one of those is on your week's plan, it is a number one. Just do it. Just do it. You don't fudge it. We all get caught up in like doubt and all the stuff. If it's small enough and you know, touch the tree, come on. Just go touch the tree. Touch the tree. <laughs> because I don't know if some of you are like this. My, I call it the attention wheel. You make a plan, you do it, then you pause and reflect. A lot of us hang out on one of those. I'm going to pause and reflect a lot. Or I'm just going to do, 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 and that's just reacting. But if you dedicate time to each of those things, and this is when you do it. You said it was a one. You said it was important. Just do it, because you can't ruin that much in a week. All right, so when it is something that was on your week's plan, what's awesome is this feeling of checking them off. Because you said it was important, you did it. It's like a credibility account in yourself. You get to say, I'm doing what I said I would do. Even if you fail, yay. Then once a week, after you check all of them off, or maybe all but one, <laughs> that's when you redact and respond, or I call it pause and reflect. You go and you review your roles and goals. Then you can take 20 minutes just to review this stuff and make a new week's plan. This is the simple system for everything. This fits on a three by five card. My whole life's plan is right here. And what to do today, meditate, haven't gotten to that yet, is on this list. Actually, I did. Oh, I did do that. Ah, feels good. Check. Nice. My week's plan is here. And the before I dies are on here, too. And we'll get to those in a minute. Now, I said this isn't a checklist. Um, this is also your best shot at focusing your attention and getting into what's called flow, losing yourself, doing what you care about. There, just to give you uh, another idea, there are other things on my website. These are tools for deepening the practice. There's what I call the cast of characters, which is, has, it's, thanks for the intro, has the important people in your life, how they're connected to the different roles. Uh, there are the supporting roles. Who are you helping? Who is helping you and who is hurtful? And you gotta change these ones because they're bogging you down. Gotta either move them off or into one of the other categories. Who's the audacity? Uh, somebody who likes to listen to themselves talk. They will bore you and they are not good listeners and they are just there for your ears. Great word. Yeah. You know a bunch of them. I'm one right now. Uh, <laughs> it's your show, buddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, an ebook I have for free to help you take bigger projects and do a mind map and get it down to your next steps. I've got the five questions that, to answer what to do next based on agile uh, software development. Um, and then there's the smart and sexy goals. Right? You've heard of smart goals, these are sexy. Smart goals tell you whether you can accomplish it. Sexy means whether you like to get there. <laughs> <laughs> so look that one up. But it's a checklist that tries to help you understand how to get you into flow. Uh, there is the portable pocket planner foldable thing, which includes a calendar. My car mechanic uses this, carries it in his back pocket. He doesn't do the digital thing. It's all paperful. Uh, there's the attentionometer. It's a little game with, with uh, that one's not free. It's a little game with popsicle sticks. Good party thing. And then there are the uh, goggles. Everybody's been asking what's with the goggles. <laughs> These are one of my best tools. So one of my goals before I die is I want to start a social network of people, where people help each other do big things that really matter. And uh, you know how I do that? I put these goggles on. Can you imagine? And I ask them, is there one thing you want to do before you die? And I videotape them. 
and I ask them, what are you going to do next year about it? And it's, they're, they, it changes some people dramatically. <laughs> and then I post them online with their permission most of the time. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so my goal this year is to launch the pilots of Pilot Fire. And I did that. And it's pretty cool what people want to do. Uh, if you go to bigreally.com, um, you will be prompted with this. Are you ready to do something big that really matters? And there's one button. Yes. And when you answer it, you'll have to be asked, before I die, I want to. And then you're asked, is this something you're willing to set aside attention and time to do? And you get two choices. Hell yes or no. And when you hit no, you come back to this screen. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty simple. You answer these things, and at the end of it, you get to share it, and you get to ask for help. Diana Camaros, before I die, I want to share my music with the world, and this year I will release a full, my first full-length album and present a CD release concert. She's one of the first people to put on the goggles. AJ Jacobs did this. Before I die, I want to unite the entire human race in one big family. And he's going to throw the world's biggest and best family reunion next year. He put on the goggles. Some are a little bit more down to earth. Before I die, I want to bring healthy food to communities of Detroit, Michigan, and the world. And this year, I will make energy bars in a commercial kitchen. Very specific. As soon as he makes his first energy bar in a commercial kitchen, check. That's touching the tree. Did it. Done. <clears throat> George wants to, before I die, I want to have a positive influence on helping people connect to the cycles of the planet. And this year, I will release my chicken coop design. <laughs> you, you lay this piece of paper on a three by five, or on a four by eight piece of plywood, take a jigsaw to it, you got a chicken coop. He just wants to go across the country with his family. He wants to try to save $50 a month. So, I hope you will join the pilot for Pilot Fire. Uh, I, but I want to emphasize that these big goals are not, it's not a bucket list. It's not a way to be totally aspirational. We don't make goals because achieving them will make us happy. We don't know. what we, we have these brains that make up stories about what we think will make us happy, and it is, they are wrong almost all the time. But we make goals because so we can focus on what we care about. And we know for a fact, we know study after study, that losing ourselves doing what we care about makes us happy. Being totally present focused on what we care about. So, I just figured this out like this year that I could do all of this on three by five cards. And I'm going to walk us through it uh, in less than five minutes. <laughs> uh, so, we've started. I want you to take one card and write down your leading roles, starting with pilot and stoker, just for my sake. Write down three or four, five, six, seven roles that are the ones that you know you need to pay attention to. Now, there are different ways to state your goals. But take another card and pick one of the roles you're really close to, one of the roles you know very well, one that's really dear to your heart. And at the top, put as a that role, as a sister, as a friend, as a writer. And think of it in this terms, these terms. As a designer, before I die, I want to. Not a designer, but as a your role. What is one thing you know for sure you want to do before you die? So you know the next question. It might be the same one you just wrote down. You can cheat. It's fine. Stick a roll on it. Now, at the bottom of your card, put the name of the person who actually would care that you do this. 
somebody who loves you enough and know, or knows you enough or knows the work you do enough <coughs> that you'd want to tell them that they would care. Now, I do this for every role, and sometimes it's more than one big thing that I want to do for each role. Uh, but I'm going to have you do this one additional piece, which is to figure out with this one what you're going to do this week. Just so you can get on your way towards imagining what next week, next week looks like. So I do this, like I said, for every role. And it's usually just once a year. And it's interesting to look back on it because it's usually true. Wow, that is what I wanted to do this year. And it's really OK if you abandon them. It's really interesting to find the ones that you abandon. But doing this exercise is a way to touch your heart. It's so far away before I die, you would think, you would hope. But it's a very fast path to what you care about, I think. And figuring out what I want to do next. So before I die, I want to learn to love to sing. It happened about six months ago. I started loving to sing. I've been doing it for 25 years. And only six months ago, I was like, hey, that's pretty great. I'm going to talk like this all the time. <laughs> I like to feel the mask vibrate. Uh, and this year, I'm going to lead a song at Simple Rev. It's coming up. It's coming up. Um, and go online, or I'll teach you how to do the week's plan and the day's plan. Yes? I just want to interject. So many of goals were so self-focused, and I love how you've tied our roles to make it relationally based in how we connect with people. So yeah. That's the other motive. It's the other way to touch your heart, right? As soon as I see, I got it. Oh, anyway, I don't have that much time, but thank you for that, that comment. So uh, my hope is that we've touched our dreams today a little bit. My hope is that understanding that the gap between our dreams and what we do now is OK, and that we have a stairway where we can walk back and forth between them to take action now. Because we can't grab our dreams. You don't want to grab them too hard, because then they get hurt. But if we can reach over and touch them every once in a while, to me, that's being fully alive. I'm living one of my dreams right now, standing here with you. I've like lived a bunch of them while I've been up here in different roles. And you know, even, even trying to touch these things at the risk of failure is totally worth it. You know, as a husband, I've totally failed twice. <laughs> Nose dives. I tried really hard. But I now know how to love. I'm damn good at it. I'm a great ex-husband. I'm a great lover. And I'm very loved. I tried really hard, failed, and I'm doing it. As, yeah, as a <laughs> creative director working for corporations, failed three times. <clears throat> oh, God. But I have creativity in my life all the time now. And as a stage singer, I have... <laughs> failed so many times, like bruising my lip on the first song on the mic. Bam! Oh, God. Searing pain. God. So again, I urge you to take a risk soon. You're going to get the chance to, to sing, which is risky for some people. And uh, at the very least, tell, take the risk of telling somebody your dream. Just saying it out loud. I'm not a big believer in holding your dreams inside, blowing out the candle is going to make them. Telling them, that's the first step. And here's what's interesting. When you tell somebody your dream, it changes. It goes into the air, and sometimes you'd be like, I don't want to do that at all. I had somebody take off the goggles and be like, thank you, I am not doing that. <laughs> it was great. I mean, that, that was awesome. And also, you know, think like that acrobat, right? That when you try something you care about, and it's hard, you have everybody around you cheering you on. And even that is amazing. Even that feeling of being so hooked up that people want you to do your best even if they fail, that is miraculous. So the great thing about trying to touch your dreams is that you, at least you know you lived, 
right? You did your best. And I think <laughs> that's great. I realized, you know, I looked at all my before I dies recently, and something happened in the last couple months. When I turned 50, uh, I was really dreading turning 50. And something happened in the last few weeks where I looked back at them, and I don't care about them as much. Like, some of the ones that I used to hold so closely, I thought, oh, I don't know that I need to just be trying so hard as much. So they do change. Uh, these are the words to the song. I tried to keep only three notes that you go between, see if I made this learnable. What we're going to do is we're going to sing these a couple of times through. And then at one point, I'm going to interrupt the third line. And somebody's going to stand up and go, before I die, I want to. And this year, I will. And this week, I will. You game? OK. Stay in tune. OK, it goes like this. Before I die, I want to know I lived. I want to know at the very least, I did my best. One thing I know for sure I want to do is this Before I die, I want to know I lived Try it Before I die, I want to know I lived I want to know at the very least I did my best one thing I know for sure I want to do is this Before I die, I want to know I live You got it? Before I die, I want to know I live I want to know at the very least I did my best It's one thing I know for sure Before I die, I want to learn to love to sing. And this year, I'm going to prepare a song to sing at Simple Rev 2014. And right now, we're doing it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, get your courage together. We're just doing the third line. One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. Before I die, as a mother, before I die, I want to impart wisdom to my children. This week I will talk more about heart issues that matter, and, or sorry, this year I will talk more about heart issues, and this week I will teach her one Bible verse. Yes! Everybody, yes! yes. yes. Before I die, what, what, no, 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 and one thing I know for sure I want to do is this. As a creator, before I die, I want to get my audio stories into the ears of 10,000 little kids across the globe. Wow. This year I will launch Imagining Aloud by Parents Who, and this week I will demo the new website functionality and finish producing two episodes. How's it feel? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Before I... One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. Feels good. Feels good. <laughs> Feels good. Before I die, uh, as a writer, I want to write a book. Um, and this year, I want to write a book. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, and so this week, I'm going to write my first sentence. Oh. Yes. 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 Come on. You're going to keep it going. That uncomfortable silence is fine with me. <laughs> One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. As a writer before I die, I want to write and publish a book. And this year, I will have a rough draft finished. And this week, I will write every single day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to get two more out of this. One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> As a... Oh, 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 oh
Connor, no, I'm the host. We'll, we'll come back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Geography is <laughs> later. Um, before I die, I want to knit something for every member of my family. Wow. And this year, I'm going to knit my husband a tooth, which is a winter hat for an American. <laughs> uh, and this week, I will knit an inch of that hat. <laughs> Dan? Before I die as a man, as a husband, and as a father, and a son, and a brother, I want to be in better shape when I turn 50 next year mm. than I was when I was 30. Mm. 40 pounds into it, and this week I'm going to continue. Yes. All right, let's do it gospel style. A couple rounds. Ah. Before I die, I want to know I live. Stand up, everybody. I might know at the very least I did my best. One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. Before I die, I want to know I live. Last time. Before I die, I want to know I live. I want to know at the very least I did my best. One thing I know for sure I want to do is this. Before I die, I want to know I live. Thank you. So our attention is our most precious resource. I want to thank you for yours. Thank you very much. Thank you.